All right, guys, welcome back to Wise Up. Uh, today's video is going to be on bad coaching cues. So what I mean by bad coaching cues, these are technique tips that are meant to improve your form and technique, but at the same time might lead you down the wrong path. Being in a very large class setting puts a lot of responsibility on trainers. Not only do we have to correct everyone's form, we have to motivate them verbally, and we have to say maybe something that'll connect in their mind within five seconds, that'll click, clack, and then boom, their technique will be on point. A lot of the time, what ends up happening is phrases that are thrown out that may mislead some of these clients because they may take the cue a little bit too literally. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. One of the biggest ones is chest up. So this isn't just group classes, CrossFit, boot camps. This is even in uh, personal training. When we as trainers say chest up, we're talking about getting someone out of a little bit too much kyphosis. We don't want just their chest up, we want a neutral spine. So a really good replacement for this cue would be staying tall. We're after the spine being nice and neutral, and we want the spinal erectors to act in the way they should be. They're not meant to arch the upper back only, they're meant to elongate the spine and keep it erect as such. So with the intention of the trainer trying to correct someone's form, it's very easy for things to get misunderstood on the client's point of view and end up ruining their technique or worsening their form. Another cue that could maybe benefit a lot more people would be spreading the ground. So still try to get that foot tripod in the person's foot, but also give them a cue of spreading the ground laterally. Instead of just twisting and turning the person's foot, we're actually creating some lateral force that'll engage the hip stabilizers if we want to and maintain that arch in the foot. So one of the other cues that's a little bit more misleading is with the squat. A lot of the time people do say, hey, sit back with the squat. Always sit back. I get the whole point of this cue because we're trying to get the client to use more of their hips rather than just bending their knees forward. But judging on the client and the type of anatomy they have and the type of squat they're trying to do, we need to tailor make this cue for that client. So what I like to include is sitting back but also bringing your knees to your chest. So you're not just sitting back and pushing your hips all the way back, involving a lot of your lower back and almost ending up in a hinge. You're initiating the movement with the hips, but you're also involving the quads, because they are main mover with the squat, and bringing those knees up to your chest. Theoretically, you don't need to reach your chest, you're just trying to get the rectus femoris to do its job. All right guys, so the last cue uh, for today, the, my most hated cue is not letting your knees pass your toes. Um, you probably heard this before in lunges, squats, things like that, anything where you're trying to do a lower body push. What we're trying to do is avoid getting onto the toes. If we're trying to execute a lower push movement, especially targeting the quads, we're gonna have to have that shin angle where our knees pass our toes. Judging that the client, the person, whoever it is, is able to keep their heel on the ground and their knees over the toes. That's what the whole cue is really about. If you're trying this movement and you're going on your tippy toes, keep that range of motion before your toes so your knees shouldn't pass your toes. That way you don't get on top of your tippy toes and in a bad position. So what it really boils down to is what we're focusing on. If you have a client that wants to improve their quads, we're gonna have to have that shin angle like I just said about knees passing the toes, right? If you have someone who has knee pain, you might want to switch them to more of a hip dominant squat, maybe even a box squat, maybe a wide stand sumo squat where they're thrusting those hips back the entire time using more of the posterior chain. And also if you have someone who wants to focus a bit more on the posterior chain, you can even turn the lunge into a glute movement by widening that stance. The knees aren't gonna pass the toes and you should probably feel that a bit more in the glutes. So what it boils down to from this horrible cue is can your knees pass your toes with your heel staying flat, aka dorsiflexion? Do you have a healthy amount of dorsiflexion? Number two, what muscles are you focusing on? Are you looking for improving your quads? Are you looking at the posterior chain? Once you have those two main ones, not to confuse you guys, you should be able to pick a direction. If your knees can't pass your toes with your heel staying on the ground, guess what? That's where you're gonna be. If your knees can pass your toes and you want bigger quads, Obviously, your knees are going to have to pass your toes if you're trying to do a compound movement such as a lunge or some type of variant of the squat. So the takeaway from today's video, I'm not going to go cue by cue, is for trainers, let's just try to boil down what we actually want the client to do 
and clarify the position we want their bodies to be in. The other side of the coin, uh, clients, always ask for clarification if you're not really understanding what the trainer wants you to do. Because it might put you at risk and you might be wasting time inside the gym. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, really be careful with the cues you're giving and receiving. Always ask for clarification so you get the best results. See you on the next one.